Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Kwame Sha'ala, Koholo Yumla Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bahashim Rakahakudash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. And just want to say the water toward the Akim and Akwaf, that saw here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai to the best of their ability. This is Achanan Awaf, just coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that is edifying by the Spirit. Wanted to touch on a couple of these articles. I want to come back to this one. Um, Kamala Harris will deliver for black men. So, of course, you know, she's um she's pretty much pushing to get that vote of the so-called black man because it's just too much chatter out here that they're not going to vote for her. They don't want nothing to do with her. You know what I'm saying? She says Donald Trump is a serious threat to the lives of black men. <laughs> says the woman that's um, pushing for you to, uh, you know, our women to abort our babies, man. This is what she's running her campaign on. So what she's done is pretty much she I think she's offering like uh, twenty thousand dollars, you know, um, business loan, you know, to so-called black men, you know, talking about some goddamn marijuana uh, uh, companies and, you know, bullshit that that's not going to help Jake. And first off, twenty thousand dollars is not going to do anything for your ass as far as owning a business here in America. You know, twenty thousand dollars. So-called white man, he can walk into a damn bank, man, and get him a couple of hundred thousands millions depends on you know what level he's on so to speak you know and she talking about some damn so what the fuck you about to do with twenty thousand dollars to start a business with all this damn inflation going on so she's you know she's really just she's 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 pimping and whoring on um, jake out man but let's get this article first caught my eye here you know of course gucci here uh it says luxury fashion brands were left with billions of dollars worth of unsold products last year here's where the items went so the point that I want to, you know, point out is, is, okay, why, why, why are the sales so down? Because this place is falling, man. It says two of the world's biggest luxury brands may be sitting on a whopping $4.7 billion worth of unsold goods, around $5.1 billion at the current exchange rate. That's enough to make even the most fashionable among us raise an eyebrow. Now, you raise an eyebrow, all right. It says, what's happening? This is Louis Vuitton, LVMH, and Carrick. <clears throat> the parent companies behind brands like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Saint Laurent saw their unsold inventory more than double between two, 2014 and 2023, according to the La Conciria's summary of business of fashion analysis. In 2023 alone, LVMH reported 3.2 billion, 3.5 billion in unsold goods, while Carrick clocked in at uh, 1.6 billion. That's a whole lot of handbags and stilettos gathering dust. Why? Because this place is falling. Matter of fact, let's just jump. Let's just jump to the scripture real quick. But you know, when I seen that, I'm just like, yup. People don't have it like that no more. People are out here just, you know, trying to keep gas in the car to keep going back and forth to work. And to keep going back and forth to work, to just keep a roof over their head. So people are really just working to, um, Working to go, uh, you know, working to sleep and sleeping to work. That's it. It's no more of that enjoyment. All the joy and mirth is gone. All that, oh, you know, uh, even these men simping and going out of their way to save up. Got three, four damn jobs trying to get a, a, a chick a $10,000 bag and some goddamn red bottoms or something, you know, <laughs> and they ain't got $10 to put into the damn bag. All that stuff is over with, man. And, and we love it, too. We applaud this, man. This is why we continue to pray. And continue to tell you to pray. Pray for the downfall of Esau Edom's kingdom. These people right here, matter of fact, you remember back when Louis Vuitton, they go back to the, if I'm not mistaken, and we can look it up. Let me get the scripture real quick. If I'm not mistaken, they are the very ones that made some of the very first slave chains, you know, as far as like chains to, to, to bind us in. If I'm not mistaken, because I remember it's been a while back. I'm not sure how long ago. But I, I think they had like a shoe design. I'm not sure who, who the fuck. It was somebody. But if I'm not mistaken, though, Louis Vuitton had a lot to do with, I think, from maybe the 1800s or so, a lot to do with the, the chains that were that bound um, the so-called blacks, man, during slavery, man. So we'll check that out. Right. Ecclesiastes 25 and 7. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. And the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that have joy of his children and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. Right. So this is what we're witnessing. We're witnessing the fall of our enemy. I'm going to have to go off in here. 
it's Kamala shit ain't shit though. We don't really have to get into this. We already know. See, she it says um, she's providing one million forgivable, one million forgivable loans up to twenty thousand dollars to black entrepreneurs and others who have a good idea but don't have the resources, connections, or access to capital to get their business off the ground. So why haven't you been doing anything like this before? Right? It says, uh, and it's only because she she's not getting that black that so called black man's vote. It says she um, launched a national health equity initiative focused on black men. Legalize marijuana at the federal level to break down unjust legal barriers that hold black men and other Americans back. We don't need no fucking. We don't even need marijuana. That's some shit we need to get rid of. It says lower cost by enacting the first ever ever federal ban on corporate price gouging for food and groceries. You're not gonna be able to stop that. <laughs> lower rent and provide down um, provide down payment assistance to triple the number of new first black homeowners. And the only people that's really benefiting from some, you know, damn free housing or housing in general is the so-called black woman out here with three, four baby daddies, man. Jake, the so-called black man has never been able to get in on any of that shit. Now, here she goes. She's trying to offer you a measly ass $20,000 to start a damn marijuana business or some stupid shit. Anyway, let's go back here, though, because I want to see if Louis Vuitton had anything to do, because I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I just like. This was before I came in the truth. Let me see. Uh, I think his name is Louis. Not Louis. Louis Vuitton. Make. Slave chains. Let's see. He so said, what did they? They were trunk makers. Well, they're saying they linked to forced labor and abuse. Fashion, Foot Locker, and Louis Vuitton linked to forced labor and abuse. Well, we already, you know, we, 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 we know that. Uh... None of these companies, man, are they making all that goddamn money off of uh, cheap ass shit? I'm trying to say, maybe I didn't word it right. Uh, but you know, they be trying to uh, wipe shit clean man they they don't want nothing to do they don't want nothing to do with that type of stuff okay well here we go right here uh, well, let's see. I don't want to go into damn Facebook. It says in the early 1800s, 1900s, Louis Vuitton sponsored human zoos in which black people were placed in displays. All right. Well, I didn't know that part. I knew that they had these human zoos, but I didn't know that it had anything to do with Louis Vuitton. It says it's so funny. It takes posts like this for our people to stop shopping with these designers that hate us. Then when they come out and say they hate us, we spend more money on them to prove the point to prove a point. Uh, anyway. Yeah, you know how I go. That's just one thing, man. But if I'm not mistaken, there was a story on them making some damn slave chains at one point. And they probably done, you know, wipe the shit clean. All right, well, let's see what this is. Uh, hold on. Oh, this is Tip. Maybe it was Tiffany. It might have been Tiffany. Yep, a brass female slave collar. I think that's who it was. I might have. I might have mistaken who um the Louis Vuitton thing. I think it was. I think it was um Tiffany's. And our people, you know, they they do go out of their way 
to try and um, get these these um, you know these designer bags and designer and they don't know that you know going back to as long as these companies have been around that they were a part of slavery man you see now let's get that scripture on that um, shameful spewing but we're about to see in a few weeks what what things about to be like just combling um, Trump shit praying to go ahead and push this shit on over in the Civil War. Habakkuk 2 and 16. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's wrath it's like it, the cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. See? That's why you're hearing about all these sundown towns just being um, flooded out. That's all shameful spewing on them. A lot of people didn't even know that those those places that's being flooded out with sundown towns, you know, until the floods actually hit them. And, you know, you know, of course, the world of TikTok. And if you don't know what a sundown town is, a sundown town and they still have them to this very day. You know, actually, I'm, I'm at the plantation right now in one of them. But basically what it is, is, you know, if you get caught in their town, the so-called white man, if you get caught in their towns after dark, what they would say is you forfeit your life and they can do what they want to do to you. So you do your work in their town. You get the fuck on before the sun go down, right? And Eight Mile is one of those spots too, as far as like here um, in the Detroit area. You know, people look at Eight Mile and they see Eminem, you know, and think you know he's such a great rapper, but they don't know that that movie, Eight Mile, or the the actual street that was that was a pretty much a border for so called blacks. You didn't go past that point, you know, because it used to be a wall there. But anyway, um, yeah, you can clearly see, man. Let's get a little bit more of this article here, um, on, on, on um, why he's sitting on all these damn goods and not selling shit. And it's a good thing, man. You know, they, you know, people again, man. People just trying to survive right now. Even people with money, with so-called money. So you have to realize a lot of people that we think that are rich, they live in check to check too. They just living, you know, in a bigger way. That's all. Just like your, you know, your your little house note, maybe you know, whatever a month grand two grand whatever it may be they they shit might be ten thousand twenty thousand forty thousand dollars a month for some of the mortgages and some of these celebrities and shit that they be living so they be struggling too they're not buying this shit okay so it says um why is this excess inventory concerning this mountain of unsold luxury items is bad for business and terrible for our planet well they really don't give a fuck about the planet they 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 care about the business part of it the fashion industry is already a significant contributor to Earth's overheating and excess production only amplifies the problem. Well, they, we already know that this climate change shit that they're talking about is all being produced by um, so-called white people. They're the ones that own the uh, oil refineries and nuclear power plants and motherfuckers always flying all over the skies, jet, jet streams and shit. So we know it's them, you know. Let's get another one real quick. It's not hard to tell. Hey, but you know, the world knows, but it's like Esau don't want to, you know, they're telling on themselves, but they, they really don't want to give up the info because it's shameful spewing. Psalm 64 and 8. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. Don't nobody want nothing to do with uh, uh, Esau shit, man. They're like, uh, well, yeah, uh, well, you know, they get on TV, they get on the news, they get in these podcasts, and they get to telling on each other. But when you get to pointing it out, okay, well, these are your people. Oh, well, they want to get the fucking busting up there, and they, they running. Okay, but it says, think about all the resources that go into creating these products. Because they're greedy as hell. Water for growing cotton, energy for manufacturing, and fuel for shipping. When items don't sell, those resources effectively vanish into thin air. Plus... There's the waste factor. In the past, some luxury brands would reportedly destroy unsold items to protect their image. While that practice is becoming less common and is now banned in France, uh, finding eco-friendly solutions for thousands, thousands to millions of unused products is a massive challenge. Yeah, I can. Can you imagine that? Here you go. You struggling to get that very first Louis bag, and they just tossing them bitches in the trash like they ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? And they ain't losing no money, neither. Probably, you know, um, um, doing tax write-offs, little bullshit. You know how they got them loopholes and shit where Esau can, can, can constantly, you know, prosper in his kingdom. 
says, are luxury brands doing anything about this? Both LVMH and Kerrig are aware of the issue, but their solutions are still a work in progress. At the time of the, of the report in March, LVMH said that it expected to sell much of its excess inventory. Meanwhile, Keurig says it has been working on more sustainable production practices across the brand, including waterless dyeing <laughs> and supporting regenerative farming practices, which supports biodiversity by prioritizing soil health and aims to avoid toxic chemical fertilizers and her herbicide, among other things, as the Natural Resource Defense Council explains. So they, that, there you go, man. That's that shameful spewing. And that's them actually telling on themselves, man. They're telling you that they fucking up the planet. It's worth noting that luxury brands aren't alone in this struggle. Yeah, we know it's not just them. Just imagine these are just two companies with five or so billion dollars worth of unsold goods that they've, you know, done, done all kinds of shit to the earth to produce that shit. Just that's just two of these companies. Imagine this man, it's millions of these companies out here, man. It says it's worth noting that the luxury brands aren't alone. It's a lot. The entire fashion industry grapples with uh, aligning supply and demand, especially given the fickle nature of the trends. And the fast fashion sector is one of the worst offenders. Yep. What's being done about the excess inventory more broadly? Uh, let's see. While the luxury sectors catches up, other parts of the fashion world are leading the charge and tackling overproduction. Some brands are embracing made to order models. You think that they would be doing that anyway? That's just like all these fucking cars, bro. Yeah, well, you fucking, you got a, uh, you ain't sold no 2022s, no 2023s, no 2024s, but you got a 2025 and you already working on a 2026 and a 2027. What all this shit sitting around on the planet, man? Instead of, okay, uh, well, what kind of car would you like? How would you like it? How would you, you know, what kind of seats? This, 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 and this. Okay, we'll have that made to order for you. We'll have it at this particular time. You put down your little down payment, whatever, whatever. And when the car is produced, you come and pick that shit up. But here you go. You're making all these different cars and all these dumbass colors. You know, it's just, just car lots full of bullshit. And we're talking about... This shit is crazy, bro. But this man doesn't think like that. He's not, he, he's not a, a rational thinker, man. Okay, they say um, this reduces waste and can save money in the long run. Rental and resale platforms are booming, giving new life to pre-loved luxury items. By extending the lifespans of these products, we reduce the need for new ones. Innovative recycle, recycling technologies are emerging to break down unsold textiles and apparel into new products, creating a more circular economy for, for fashion. So they're giving you some recycled shit. Anyway, let's see what some of the comments got to say. I mean, you know, it's pretty much it, man. I didn't want to go too far on it. Uh, yep, I just said this. Michelle from Houston, Texas says the reality is people are trying to feed their families and keep a roof over their heads. I don't think a luxury handbag fits into their budget right now. Well, hey, it, it's still people out here stupid enough to still be trying to get that shit. And it's mainly that woman, man. And, and the so-called black woman, oh my. She say she she got to have it, man. It's crazy how you'll see some of these women dress. They be dressed to the T, looking good as shit or what you would call good, looking great. And you'll get to their house, man. The house will be trash. But they got that bag. They got them shoes. They got that low car. You know? But you can you 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 matter of fact, you'll see some of these women and they'll be out in public looking good and their kids are unkept, which is crazy as hell. Like, damn, bitch, you you ain't think about your babies, but your ass is, um, you know, all together. Anyway. Uh, this says, if you're living in a, <laughs> if you live, <laughs> live near a major city, you're just begging to be robbed with a high-end bag. Yeah. Yeah. But they know who it is, man. They know who, 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 who who's the one. You got a high-end. Because see, to some people, you know, that that's not a high-end bag to them. That's just, you know, what they, you know, they can afford. You know, generally, a lot of these Edomites, they can afford that shit. Like, it's no problem. It's nothing to them. That's just, you know, what it is. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, 
if you running up on them, you're just going to be taking the bag. You're not going to really be taking anything from them because they're not going to have really that much in there. They only carry in $20, $30, $40, $50, maybe $100 in cash in a bag. They generally are doing everything digitally, you know. Now, you might, if you run across one of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American women, they'll have their whole damn life in that bag. So you might come up on them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's see. This person says problem is that even at 90% discount, there there will still be no tax loss. That's because what they sell for a dollar probably costs them five cents to make. Yeah. Yeah, this shit not costing that much, man. Says, uh, this person says so much isn't even worth it anymore. Lower quality. X Chanel, not handmade. Now factory gold tone on hardware used to be 18, 14, then 10 karat um, gold plated. Yep. Exactly, John. Knitwear used to be made in US, USA, now China, and the price went higher. Yep, they they getting it done for cheaper and they're raising the damn price. Yep, another person said the same thing. People are struggling to feed their families, to keep their families from going hungry and homeless. Luxury handbags and designer goods is not going to help people feed their families and keep people families from going homeless. Yep. Overpriced goods are hard to even fathom when it's when it's a struggle just to afford simple home and groceries. Wake up to reality designers. <laughs> hey man. This person says if all black people st stop shopping there, it'll turn into pay less. <laughs> uh, this person says, I saw Jimmy Choo shoes advertised on the internet. Who would pay a thousand dollars for a pair of shoes just like Saks Fifth Avenue a day before a day a day for five hundred dollars or more and it didn't look like much. Yeah. No nah, man, a lot of that shit don't be looking like much. It's just people are, you know, they're caught up into these names, caught up into these brands. And people are still gonna try and do this shit. That's the thing. That's the thing. But you'd be surprised at a lot of people that's wearing a lot of knockoff shit and you wouldn't even know because you you really thinking that um says Selma Hayek's husband owns curling. Okay, all right. Quality of the work is not good as it used to be. This person says Bidenomics as well are in soft recessions and people just are scared to wear nice things as they don't want to get robbed. Yeah, oh man, all that shit don't matter to me. I, I'm just... It says walk into cold store, you will see massive sale racks of clothes, especially Reese, Reese Witherspoon's brand. Across the aisle, you will see racks and racks of her new merchandise no one is buying. Yep. So you get the point, man. You see what it is. I mean, it is what it is, man. Hey, these are the days and times we're living in. I say it's beautiful. And like I, you know, I didn't really that Kamala story, but she she's definitely out here. Uh, she's she's spinning the block on you, you you dumbass Jake, man. I think she's supposed to be here in Detroit today. If I'm not mistaken. Um, but. This is her agenda, though. Twenty thousand dollars, bro. That shit ain't shit. Look at this. Black men deserve a president who will deliver on promises. Man, come on, bro. You promised a bunch of shit four years ago. You didn't do shit. You Jake better wake up, man. Vice President Harris knows that black men have long felt that too often their voice in our political process has gone unheard, and that there is so much untapped ambition and leadership within the black male community. Black men and boys deserve a president who will provide the opportunity to unleash this talent and potential by removing historic barriers to wealth, creation, education, employment, earnings, and health, and improving the criminal justice system. <laughs> Black men deserve a president who will deliver on promises and, and equip them with the tools and resources to make their aspirations a reality. Man, this lady crazy, bro. 
She says Donald Trump is a serious threat to the lives and opportunities of black Americans and black men. But like I said, again, she's the one that's pushing for us uh, for, for, for our black women, so-called black women to um, abort our babies. You're the threat. That's the threat. You 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 can't tell me that. That's not a. That's the that the. Uh, this bitch don't want us to exist. Not to mention, she's pushing. You know what I'm saying? That that LGB. You know she she pushing that shit hard on our people, man. To go along with them 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 A B O R T S. <laughs> if it was up to this bitch, man, you wouldn't even exist in another generation. Straight up, man. Anyway, man, we don't even have to even go into this here. I'm going to end off there. Um, <clears throat> and we're not ignorant of Satan's devices because that, that bitch is, is the damn devil too, man. She's a female version of the damn devil. 2 Timothy 2 and 11. Hold on. Uh, no, Salakia. 2 Corinthians. I'm bugging. <coughs> 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. See, she's no different than the damn Edomites, man. Because she is an Edomite, as far as you know what I'm saying. Like I, you know, been saying, if what her father, which he's 86 years old, you never see him, you don't hear nothing from him. He's alive, too. You don't, you don't see nobody, um, 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 you know, they, ain't no, they probably got that guy somewhere locked up. Making sure that he don't get out walking in public so nobody nobody can walk up and stick a microphone in his face and get the interview on his ass about his daughter. You don't see him. But what from what he said though, he said that a his mom was so called raped by his by, by a slave master in Jamaica. By a so called white man. So if that's the case, she's the offspring of a so called white man because her father is. And your seed line goes through your father. So this lady, she's married to a so called white man. She's raising his 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 family, you know, his his so-called white children. And you don't see much of them like that, neither, you know, but she's all running her campaign on how she's black and she loves you black people. Y'all better wake the fuck up, man. And neither one of them are to be voted for. You might as well just let let these people just go ahead and just, you know, let, let these Edomites go out here and vote, man. Because um, a brother made a real. um Um nice comment in, in my comment board so on another channel i got and what he was saying was why isn't she going after the the, the so-called um um east indian man why she not why not why why, why they not running down on a so-called east indian man and, and telling him telling them how much they should be voting for her because they're actually uh her people See, they push that shit on you, on you Negroes, man, and you Negroes only. You don't see nobody being pressed like how they press us about that type of shit. You think that these, so these, 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 these East Indians would be lining up in droves, rallying them behind their, 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 you know, their, their, their relative or whatever the fuck, but they're not running down on them. Here you go, you got a damn Hamite, Obama, looking stupid as hell. Running, you know, trying to trying to run game on Jake, talking about we, we, we your, your brothers, you're not behind Kamala like how you were behind me, like get the fuck out of here. Anyway, man, shit just pisses you off. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and end up there, man. I pray that the lesson was edifying. Hey, keep on praying for the downfall of this man's kingdom because it is falling, man. It's working. So with that, Kwame Shalom and the Bubble Ball.